this episode I will show you something that you probably won't see anywhere else very soon. Welcome to AppMonster, my name is Jonas and in this episode we're having an exclusive look at the Bravo plugin for Figma. The plugin is currently in the closed beta where some testing is done and because I am part of the Bravo expert program, the Bravo team was kind enough to let me try that out beforehand and I want to take you along. So as you can see, I'm here in the Figma desktop version and I have just opened this plugin. You will be able to open it like all your normal plugins, but because this is a plugin in development, I can open it here under development. And the plugin consists mainly of this window here. This doesn't look like much at the moment because as I said, it's still in development. We have two buttons here. This directs me to the notion tag list that you already know from the Bravo website where all the tags are listed. And this will direct me to the Bravo website where we have some Figma sample files. This field, this text input field is interesting because here you can write some tags. For example, as I type something in, you can already see that I have a list of tags here a little under this text. I would suggest to check if this is really a valid tag and if it's not, you could just display a warning or something like that because now you could write anything in here and it will add it as a tag. Let's try something legit like the intro screen. So let's take intro once and you see that this is added and also it recommends us the intro always tag, which wouldn't be possible because we can only have one intro tag here at the moment, but we haven't selected anything. So everything I write in here is useless at the moment. But let's have a look at some tags because I've already seen that this window also recognizes the tags that I've already built in here. So for example, Let's take a look at my home screen where I have this refresh pull tag and you can see it's already loaded in here. There's something else you can see, the node type. So as I've said in multiple tutorials before, it's really important which level of frame you're currently on or more to say which element you're currently trying to put that tag on. Just as a quick reminder, you have the top level frame, which is also selected here. And then you have the second level frames. So top level frames would be like in my last tutorial, the QR code visor page. This is a classic top level frame because this is relevant to the whole screen. Something like the container tag would only be relevant to second level frames because only that way you can split up your screen here. And when we go inside of that, we can see that we have some normal elements. Let's see if I can find an element with an actual tag in there. Yes, here's an element with the component input tag and the action filter tag. So here you can see the node type is not top level frame anymore, but now text because this is a text element. And you can see we have this action tag. So I don't really know what that does at the moment because we are not using any actions in this tag. We're using the action filter tag, but it's selecting the action close tag here. I don't really know what that's about, but you can see that we have the audio and the action tags here, which would be relevant if you have something clickable like a list of links. When I now try to add another tag, for example, let's see if I can delete this action filter tag and then just put it in there again. So we're writing action. Okay, we don't get any recommended tags. I am guessing that this menu here is hidden behind the text field. So this is probably appearing behind the text field here. So let's write action filter and see when I enter that. Oh, okay, so I forgot the tags. Of course, when I double click, I can edit again. That's a really nice feature. So I don't edit anything by accident. I can also 
just continue editing in here. Now this looks really good. It's currently not filtering which tags would make sense in that particular case of a text node type. So what could be possible in the future would be to see, I know I'm in the text element right now. So tags like modal menu are not possible. You could filter out any, any top level or second level frame tags because we can't add them to text that would make things a little more easier for users. So now let's get rid of that A again. What I just realized is that when I take a look here at my actual component, you'll see it added things here, which I really didn't type in. So for example, this action filter is what I wrote earlier where I forgot the tags. When I edited it, it just added the action filter tag, but left the old input, which is definitely something that they should take care of. Now let's delete that and we're back at what I actually wanted. So now I can see that this text appeared where I also have the flexo option enabled, which is also not the case for our search bar. We can, we can have a look at the search bar. Where are we at the moment? Yes, we're here. So you can see that this is not a flexo tag, but when I take a look at the plugin, where do we have it? Rubber Tag Manager, you can see that the flexo tag is selected. I really like these three options because they are already what I expected, that they are pre-selected to our node type, but there should be an option like no tag or choose something where the value is just none because it could be confusing to have the flexo tag here. What happens if I click on Flexo? This edit the Flexo tag, but I can't unselect that. So this just adds it to this field. And we have seen that I can't put a second of the same. This is really great. If this just adds to the field, maybe something like a plus button would be cool. So you don't have this tick where it looks like you selected something, but maybe just toggle this drop down and then, for example, add the flexo tag. And then you click there and it adds the flexo tag. All right, so something else I would like to try out is some text with long links. I know from experience that very long text in general, it always has some difficulties with the UI. Let's see how they what solution they came up with. Okay, so we see there's also a problem with the UI here. We only have the border and the very long tag does, simply doesn't fit. But here again, we have the no type rectangle and then we have contents. So it realizes a rectangle can have content types, these four to be exact and I already added the web view tag, that's correct. There are also action tags again. By now I understood that this is not something to select, but much more of a menu of examples. Like when you click on the Bravo tag list to get all the information you need about that tag, but here you can just click and then quick select that to, to get rid of the writing part, to shift more into the no code so you don't really have to type anything anymore, which is really cool. I think this is it. The Bravo team will continue to develop this plugin and maybe add some features and fix the bugs I just discovered. Then we'll have a look at that again. I know this video was not a tutorial. I hope it was interesting for you to take a look behind the scenes and see what's currently in development. Feel free to share anything you would want to see from this plugin. I am sure the Bravo developers would be very thankful for that if you have any feature requests. Thank you again to the Bravo team for letting me try that out and to everyone else, keep Bravorizing.